are a primary silver producer. Um, we have a, a mix of uh, mostly byproduct uh, gold, a little bit of base metals there, lead and zinc from one of our operations uh, in Durango. And, uh, but uh, generally 60 to 70 percent uh, silver by revenue, depending on, on metal prices uh, at any given time. Uh, both of the mines are 100 percent owned, and uh, no royalties on, uh, on either one. We're not hedged, uh, although in these uh, declining prices, uh, price environments, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's not a good thing, but at any rate, um, uh, we are profitable and uh, lots of great uh, growth opportunities. So. Uh, our short-term goals are to get into the uh, mid-tier sector and uh, there's kind of a generally accepted threshold of about 5 million ounces uh, silver, uh, silver or silver equivalent uh, to get into uh, to that level. We're at about 2.5 million ounces silver equivalent production uh, right now, so uh, we're, we're on our way. Um, looking at growing our resource base as well to, uh, to over 40 million ounces uh, silver equivalent and uh, doing that through uh, organic growth as well as uh, looking for uh, strategic acquisition positions and uh, with two operations always looking to do things in a socially and environmentally uh, uh, responsible manner. Um, we uh, are uh, increasing our goals for, this is a little short on, this, on the top here, but uh, goals for 2013 are really uh, to uh, increase our cash flow uh, from the operations and that's uh, even more so in the last month with the, uh, the metal price drop that we've seen. Uh, this is uh, a very, very strong focus for us uh, at the moment and uh, uh, something that um, uh, it's kind of got a, an all hands on deck approach uh, at the moment uh, at both operations. So I'll come back to that in, uh, in a few minutes. Um, we're looking at uh, uh, moving our San Ignacio project uh, forward through uh, development uh, and into production next year and uh, drilling, uh, exploration drilling at our El Harcon project uh, as well. I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, those two projects. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, reviewing uh, additional acquisition opportunities because we do see a lot of uh, uh, opportunity out there right now uh, with uh, declining valuations. Everybody's familiar with Mexico, but just uh, to show you where the uh, where the operations are, uh, the main uh, the flagship operation is Guanajuato in central Mexico, um, and the uh, the satellite uh, uh, projects uh, San Ignacio, El Harcon, uh, Santa Rosa is an earlier stage uh, exploration project. Uh, the second mine, a uh, smaller one at uh, Topia in uh, northwestern Durango state. So focusing in on on Guanajuato. Um, you can see the, the overall trend here, but uh, uh, the city of Guanajuato, let me get the pointer here, is uh, right down here. It's uh, the capital city of the state, uh, about 200,000 people, um, international airport, uh, just uh, about 20 minutes away. And so it's uh, tr tremendous uh, infrastructure um, and uh, tremendous history, uh, one of the most historical mines, uh, mining districts uh, in Mexico. And uh, going back to uh, the 1700s, uh, Guanajuato was actually the richest silver, or sorry, the richest city uh, in Mexico because of all the uh, silver mining that was going on, going on there at the time. Uh, so uh, uh, we're well within the trend, a lot of the projects that we have, and, and you can see the, uh, uh, the San Ignacio project is just outside the, the city. The main mine operations is just right here. Uh, San Ignacio is about 20 kilometers away by road. Uh, our exploration project at Santa Rosa and, and uh, El Harcon here is still within trucking distance. These are all paved highways, four-lane highways. Uh, so what, anything we, we might find up here is still within uh, trucking distance back to the main plant at, uh, at Guanajuato. Focusing in on the uh, Guanajuato mine itself, uh, and I do have some uh, some fold-out maps. You may be able to see this in uh, in more detail if uh, if you're interested later on. But just to give you a, kind of a, a snapshot. Um, it, uh, it is an underground mine. Uh, it's been in production since the year 1600. Uh, so a tremendous history here. Uh, historically, more than 25 shafts on the property, more than 100 kilometers of underground development. Uh, so just the underground infrastructure alone is, is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, we are currently uh, uh, using two uh, main shafts. Uh, the main one here at Cata is the main production shaft with the processing plant uh, right at the top. And then Raya's shaft uh, over here uh, for uh, for men and equipment, uh, uh, we're just uh, finishing up the refurbishing that uh, that shaft. Um, probably by uh, by the end of June, just uh, improving the, uh, the the safety uh, of the shaft. Um, 
because it was built uh, around uh, 1800, uh, dug by hand, and uh, we believe it's the, the largest diameter open shaft in the world. Uh, it's about 30 feet in 35 feet in diameter, uh, going all the way down to uh, uh, 345 meters, so uh, it's about 1,000 feet deep, uh, all dug by hand. So it's a pretty remarkable structure, um, but uh, uh, as I say, we just uh, upgraded the, the safety on it. Um, we're uh, mining in these uh, the colored areas right now where our resources are, so uh, up here at Wanwatito in the, in the far northwest, but um, um, most of the mining is, is down in this area here, close to the production shaft, and uh, uh, silver gold uh, in these uh, two areas here. The uh, Santa Margarita vein uh, is a gold-rich vein. The mineralization there is a little bit different from the rest of the mine. Uh, most of the areas, it's uh, argentite with native gold, uh, but at Santa Margarita, it's uh, electrum, and uh, which is a, a naturally, uh, naturally occurring uh, gold-silver alloy. And uh, so that the gold grades are much higher, but the silver grades are much lower. Um, now, that's where we get a lot of our gold from, and as we increase the production from Santa Margarita, our byproduct gold uh, production is going up. But, of course, the flip side of that is because the silver grades are lower in Santa Margarita, the more tons we pull out of there, the more it pulls down the average uh, silver grades for the overall mine. So a little bit of a challenge there and uh, trying, to, trying to balance that. And it does have a little bit of a, an impact on, on cash costs, and I'll come back to that uh, in a minute. I uh, just mentioned um, that the, uh, the work that we've done at the plant, uh, refurbishing that, uh, getting it to the point where uh, it's, uh, uh, the rated capacity is about 1,200 tons per day, uh, but we're currently operating at about 600 tons, which means we have excess capacity, and that's where the uh, San Ignacio uh, project will, uh, will come into play, and I'll get back to that in a sec. So just uh, some stats uh, on the uh, overall production uh, for, uh, for Q1 and um, recovery is around uh, 90%, so, uh, so great recoveries uh, at the plant. It's a flotation circuit, we produce concentrates, we don't produce dore. Uh, the concentrates from here are sold to uh, the Aruba smelter in uh, Hamburg, Germany, as well as to a metal trader uh, in Mexico. And, uh, uh, there, is, uh, there are some implications with the, uh, with the smelter uh, issue that uh, uh, I'll just, uh, I guess I can mention now. The, um, uh, it's, it's basically a four-month period to, uh, to get paid, uh, and uh, that does have an impact on the financials that uh, people should be aware of, because uh, the reason we do that is that we get very good pricing from the smelter, but there is a four-month period where uh, the concentrate is, uh, um, well, two months that it's uh, in transit, uh, where the, uh, uh, the concentrate is booked at, uh, as an inventory, and then once it gets to Hamburg, there's a two-month period uh, before we get paid for it, and in which case it's uh, booked as, uh, as a receivable. And that means that at any given time, we have about 15 to 20 million dollars tied up in shipments. And that is reflected in the difference between our, our cash on hand and our working capital. And you'll see that on one of the last slides that uh, there's a bit of a discrepancy uh, or an apparent discrepancy when people look at that and say, well, you know, your cash position is 25 million, uh, your working capital is 42. Uh, you know, why the difference? Well, that's, that's the principal reason for it, that uh, at any given time we can have about 15 to 20 million dollars tied up uh, uh, on the Atlantic, basically. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out uh, is uh, the cash cost uh, in the first quarter. Uh, this is not typical for, uh, for Wanawato. Um, don't want anybody to panic when they see uh, $17 uh, an ounce uh, uh, cash costs. Uh, the reason uh, uh, for that is that uh, the grades uh, dipped uh, in the first quarter uh, by about 30-35% uh, uh, over uh, uh, previous quarters last year. And of course, when, you're, uh, when your grade drops like that, you're producing the same number of ounces, but you have to mine more tons to get them. So the overall um, uh, site costs, uh, or your uh, production costs, sorry, are, are up, um, but you're dividing by the same number of ounces, so the unit costs uh, are going up quite substantially. So uh, by comparison, Q1 of last year, uh, we had uh, better grades, 
and uh, the cash cost per ounce was $2.87. Uh, so a huge difference, and it uh, really comes down to a function of grades more than anything else. So that's um, you know, something that we're, we're very focused on right now to try and determine you know, how much of that is, is just natural grade variability, and there is a component of that, but uh, there's also uh, you know, things like uh, better grade control, uh, working with, uh, more closely with uh, the contractors, the mining contractors, and that type of thing to... Uh, improve the grades. So uh, we're, we're really focused on that right now and, and um, uh, trying to, uh, to get that back up to, to where it was. The average grade, the average silver grade for the last two years at Wanawato has been about 200 grams per ton. Uh, first quarter was 148. So, you know, that's, that's the main reason for the difference. Okay, turning to, uh, to San Ignacio, uh, as I mentioned, this is a, a satellite operation uh, to Guanajuato. It's only about five kilometers uh, to the west, uh, about 20 kilometers on the road. Um, we've, uh, we've had this property, uh, bought it at the same time. It was all part of the package when we bought the Guanajuato mine in 2005. But we, we were so focused on getting the mine up and running that uh, we didn't do any work here until 2010. But uh, when we did, we, uh, we made a new discovery on the property. And uh, given that it's so close to, uh, to Guanajuato, it, it has become a, essentially a satellite type operation. And uh, you can see that the terrain here, it's very easy to work in. Uh, we bought the surface rights uh, to, uh, uh, to be able to operate uh, on the project and the mineralization is very close to surface it's only about 50 to 75 meters uh, below surface we've uh, drilled off uh, about a, a 7 million ounce uh, uh, silver equivalent resource and uh, we're basically uh, pushing that forward now just waiting for the permit to uh, drive a ramp on it uh, this uh, hopefully getting the permit uh, in Q3 uh, at which time we can start to break ground and uh, and push the ramp down to uh, to get at the uh, at the mineralization because it's so close to uh, to Guanajuato, once we do get to the mineralization, uh, we can just basically put it on a truck, send it around to the plant. Um, that has the benefit of being able to monetize the project immediately. Uh, there's no need to uh, to build a plant here, no permitting for tailings, ponds, anything like that. So it'll be very very quick into production, and we can just gradually ramp it up as we develop the veins and the mineralization. Uh, just a gradual ramp up uh, through 2014. Uh, really touched on most of this. Uh, you can see just a little bit more detail uh, on the project. Uh, uh, there's an older mine uh, in here that focused on, on this one westerly vein. Uh, this was the old production out of here at, uh, with, with these grades. The grade of our resource now is, is uh, better on the gold, uh, similar on the silver. And uh, the resource that we have is, is just within this area here, and it's, it's really only along a 650 meter strike length when there's four kilometers of, of potential. So we haven't really uh, tested much of this at all. We drilled a few holes uh, in this area, and indicating that the mineralization does indeed extend beyond the, uh, 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 the extent of the, the current resource, uh, such that uh, we know we can expand that uh, as, uh, as we go forward. But we don't have any drilling planned for this year. We're focusing just on the development side. So we'll get back to drilling that uh, next year. Our El Harcon project is uh, also a satellite, as you'll recall from the location map, a little bit farther up to the northwest, but still within trucking distance. A little earlier stage, uh, this is a past producing mine. Um, it's a little bit different than San Ignacio in the sense that there hasn't been a lot of drilling here, so there is no existing resource. Uh, but because it is a past producing mine, there is underground access, tunnels going straight into the side of the hill uh, at this point that, uh, that will make it uh, easier to, uh, to get this up and running as well. Uh, assuming that uh, that we can establish uh, a decent resource on this, so we're just pushing ahead with the uh, the drill program right now. It started in mid-April, so still early days. But uh, the plan is uh, that if we uh, uh, if we're successful with the uh, the drilling. Uh, uh, in, uh, in moving this along strike that we can uh, determine a resource uh, on this in the second half of the year and then uh, move that forward also into, uh, into development and uh, ultimately production. So in terms of the timeline, it's probably about a year or so behind San Ignacio. So with permitting and everything, we'd be looking at uh, you know, maybe perhaps development starting in late 2014 here with, with perhaps some production in 2015. But that's all predicated on, on uh, you know, good results from the drilling and, uh, and development of a resource. So um, I don't want to 
be talking too much about uh, production and getting too far ahead of myself, but uh, uh, because it is a past producing mine and, and the mineralization is well exposed, uh, we do have a, a fairly good handle on, on what we think is there. Uh, we just need to be able to quantify it at this point. Uh, just a shot of uh, the topography and, and where, we're, uh, where we're starting to, to drill here at the intersection of, of these two veins. Uh, where you get intersections of veins like this, you often get uh, thickening, uh, so uh, better widths and decent grades uh, in areas like this. So that's where we started, and we're moving backwards along this vein here, which is uh, the primary vein. You can see some of the old uh, dumps, the workings here with the, uh, the adits going straight into the side of the hill. So uh, very easy access uh, you know, once, we've, uh, once we have this defined. Our, uh, our smaller mine uh, was actually the first one we acquired, but, uh, but it is the smaller of the two. Uh, Topia is about uh, one-third of our production, about two-thirds at Guanajuato. Uh, Topia is a narrow vein, high grade silver lead zinc mine as opposed to the uh, uh, silver and gold at uh, Guanajuato. So we do uh, produce two concentrates from here, uh, a lead concentrate that contains the, uh, the silver and, uh, and a little bit of gold and then the uh, zinc concentrate uh, as well. Both of those are sold to uh, Glencore uh, in Mexico uh, and uh, that's a good uh, long standing relationship that we have uh, with them uh, in country. We, uh, uh, one of the neat things about, about Topia, particularly when we find ourselves in, a, in a, an environment uh, like today with uh, uh, you know, dropping metal prices, is that we have a lot of flexibility here. Uh, we are operating 14 different mines around the district, and each one of those uh, is fairly independent in that there's no central shaft like in Guanajuato. Um, these, uh, these are all just tunnels into the side of the hill and uh, each one basically has its own cost center and depending on the, uh, on the stage of, of development uh, on the veins, uh, if, they're, if they're just in a, in a development stage and it looks like that might continue for, for six months or something like that, if those mine, particular mines are not making money at, this, uh, at any given time, we can close them down without having any impact whatsoever on the other mines and uh, we had to do this in 2008 when, when metal prices collapsed and we closed 10 out of the 14 mines at that time and, uh, and then just focused on the, on the four most profitable ones and then when metal prices came back up we immediately reopened uh, eight of those 10 uh, probably within uh, six months or so uh, and that allowed us to, uh, you know, to maintain profitability at, uh, at Topia. So we're going through a similar sort of review right now looking at each one of those individual 14 mines and we'll be shutting down anything that's not generating uh, uh, cash flow at this point in time and then we can always come back to them um, you know, at a later date and and the men and equipment from those mines will just be pulled out of there and redeployed somewhere else. So they can be moved into the mines that are more, uh, more profitable, higher grade. So we don't necessarily have to uh, reduce our overall production uh, by doing that. We just improve the profitability of the mine. Again, just a, a few stats, um, good recoveries, flotation plants, uh, uh, sometimes get asked why the, the gold recovery is, is lower than the rest. Um, that's simply because the, the grade is, is very low. We're typically dealing with about half a gram gold and uh, you know, usually about 0.3 uh, grams is, uh, is going out to the tailings pond anyways. Uh, and uh, so uh, when you're only dealing with, uh, um, with about 0.6 uh, head grade, then you're only getting about half of it back. So uh, it's just simply a function of, uh, of grade. Uh, again, cash costs, uh, uh, the, the grades were a little bit lower, 300 grams as opposed to 400 historically. So that had an impact on, on cash costs. So uh, again, we're having a similar focus on uh, improving grades at, uh, at, one, at, um, sorry, at Topia in order to, uh, to drive down the, uh, the unit costs here as well. Uh, just in terms of the drilling, we've, uh, we've scaled back a little bit this year um, and we'll probably uh, eliminate the, uh, or defer the, the drilling from uh, at Topia out into uh, to next year as well. Uh, so the main focus is really underground at, uh, at Guanajuato, uh, drilling uh, deep holes to, uh, uh, to expand the resource base and, and uh, continue the, uh, uh, the life of mine. Uh, with these underground type deposits, uh, you're never going to have you know, 10, 20, 30 years uh, resources or resources out in front of you, uh, you basically are just trying to replace what you mine each year and just keep a rolling resource of about four to five years ahead of you at, uh, at any given time. 
Generally speaking, we've had uh, steady growth uh, over the years. Uh, we started production in 2006, and uh, it's been been uh, a good uh, good run since that time. Um, I mentioned the uh, uh, working capital about uh, 42 million, uh, so we have a strong balance sheet uh, at the moment. Uh, margins um, are obviously going to get squeezed a little bit now with these uh, these lower metal prices. Uh, they were at their peak in 2011 when, when metal prices were, were uh, also at their peak. Uh, but uh, again, something that we're very focused on is uh, trying to keep the margins as, uh, as strong as we can. Uh, just a summary on the uh, uh, corporate structure. Uh, shares issued, about $138 million. Uh, just a, a few extra for options and such, so there's, there are no warrants uh, outstanding or anything. Um, and uh, market cap uh, was, was prepared to, uh, a couple of weeks back, so market cap right now is about $100 million, I guess. Uh, and uh, the volume is, has certainly decreased uh, significantly. Uh, we do have uh, great liquidity on, on, uh, both, uh, in both Toronto and in New York, uh, but uh, uh, the volumes have just really dried up for, uh, for the entire industry uh, in the last uh, uh, several months uh, in particular, but also even just over the last year or two. Uh, so, uh, uh, but nonetheless, the, the liquidity is there when, it, uh, when the volume comes back. I mentioned the difference between cash and, and working capital, so it's uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, being uh, uh, an established producer, and particularly in a city like Guanajuato, which is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of the, the colonial architecture going back to the days of the Spaniards. Uh, so being right there in the midst of a, of a capital city and, uh, and even in a place like Topia, uh, that's, uh, we're, you know, we're very committed to uh, working with the communities um, and uh, safety is a, is a priority. Um, uh, the, uh, the environmental aspects of, uh, uh, of the, uh, of the mine. Being underground, there's not much of a footprint. Uh, you know, the the uh, tailings are valley fell, and uh, we just have the plant uh, and the shafts, so uh, not much of a, of a footprint at all, considering we're surrounded by, by houses and uh, uh, stores, and uh, it's, it's a quite, a, quite a unique place um, you know, for, a, for a mining environment. And we have, uh, just should have mentioned there, uh, uh, three years in, in a row now, we've been awarded the, uh, uh, an award for uh, a socially responsible company in Mexico, which uh, is something we're quite proud of. And uh, you know, not, uh, not all mining companies uh, get that. In fact, we're in the, we're in the minority uh, of all the, the uh, companies, uh, the mining companies working in, in Mexico to have achieved that. We've just uh, announced this week uh, an addition to uh, Board of Directors. Uh, Jeff Chater has uh, just uh, joined us, uh, um, adds uh, some, uh, some more uh, depth uh, from the, the mining uh, sector and particularly in the capital markets uh, arena. Uh, Jeff uh, was uh, a manager of investor relations for uh, uh, First Quantum, uh, which is a, a terrific success story. And some of you may uh, be familiar with, uh, with that company. And uh, we've also added uh, a couple of vice presidents in, uh, in Mexico to uh, strengthen the uh, in-country management team uh, there as well uh, with uh, a VP of uh, uh, operations and a, v a VP of safe, uh, sorry, safety, health and environment uh, as well. So just in summary then, uh, Great Panther is a uh, primary silver producer, uh, profitable uh, even at uh, these prices, and uh, strong leverage to the silver price, uh, although uh, leverage works in both directions, of course, and uh, we're, we're seeing the effects of that at the moment, but uh, that positions us uh, for the next, uh, the next run up in, uh, in metal prices. Um, great liquidity, as I mentioned, and uh, a very strong balance sheet uh, with uh, excellent working capital. Um, looking for acquisitions, um, uh, primarily in Mexico. We, uh, we have uh, um, been working a bit in, uh, in Peru as well, but the main focus right now is, uh, is in Mexico. Just their standard disclaimers for everybody to uh, do your homework, of course. And uh, thanks for your attention, and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Questions? Great.